This video is a production of Wheels by Fleming of San Jose, California, USA, home of hand-built basic and replacement alloy bicycle wheels. I'm your host, Robert Shackelford, a.k.a. Fleming, a.k.a. Mr. Rabbit. Today's video category is Technical Information. The title for this video is Reusing and Bending Spokes. Despite the fear, uncertainty, and doom that many wheel builders put out there, the fact of the matter is spokes can be reused, oftentimes over the life of several wheels. Here are spokes worth looking at for reuse. Number one, all brands and qualities of spokes that you know have been kept at high tension for the life of the previous wheel. In other words, you know the history of the wheel and you know the spokes were always at high tension. Number two, brand name quality spokes from a wheel that had high tension when the wheel was taken apart. In other words, you don't know the history of the wheel, but the tension was high when you took it apart and the spokes were brand name quality spokes. Here's what to look for when considering spokes not worth reusing. Number one, spokes salvaged from a wheel that was under tension when taken apart. If the wheel was under tension when you took it apart, don't bother with those spokes. Number two, spokes with nasty kinks or serious scrapes from drop, chain, or accident damage. Don't bother with those spokes either. When I reuse a spoke, I often have to straighten the spoke out using a bending process for accurate sorting and for accurate recutting and re-threading in a spoke machine. When I straighten out a spoke using a bending action, I do not bend at one finite point. That introduces stress, which equals fatigue when you do that at that point. Instead, I spread the bending action out over a larger area, spreading the stress out, minimizing fatigue. You can do this using a couple fingers and a thumb, which have natural rounded surfaces, or you can use a tool that most wheel builders have underneath their own noses already, a Park Tool TS2 truing stand. A Park Tool TS2 truing stand has two pivot locations used to support the arms that hold a wheel in the truing stand. The pivot assembly in the Park Tool TS2 truing stand has three locations that come into play when I bend a spoke. The pivot base is what I use to brace the head. The flat of the arm is what I use to brace the elbow. And then the nice, smooth, rounded corner of the arm is what I use for my bending point and stress spreader. Here's how it looks when the spoke is in position. Depending on the data manufacturer for your Park Tool 2S2 truing stand, you can adjust the arm to accommodate 12, 13, 14, and 15 gauge spokes. Here's an example of the actual bending operation on the Park Tool TS2 truing stand pivot point. First, I snug the head and elbow of the spoke by adjusting the arm. Then I work to bend further out from the elbow first, and then I work my way in towards the elbow. After about five or 10 seconds, I'm done. My goal is so that when I use these spokes, they are within a quarter millimeter of the desired spoke length already, or they will be within a quarter millimeter of the desired spoke length after I recut them and re-thread them. Here's a spoke with some pretty serious damage that we're not really going to consider. It has nasty kinks at several points. It also has a serious scrape from a chain drop. It just so happens that one of the kinks is located where the chain scrape is. Don't waste your time with a spoke like this one. This spoke belongs in a Homer bucket from Home Depot. Fill that bucket up to the top and you have yourself $25 to $35 worth of recyclable metal. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can visit my website at www.mrrabbit.net. Follow the link for Wheels by Fleming, and on the Wheels by Fleming main page at the bottom is my email address. Use that to shoot me an email.